Hello, everyone. So today we're going to talk about how we can make our science more interesting using stories, how to hook people in and make sure that they are with us when we talk till the end. As you probably noticed, in conferences, there is a pattern. Uh, people tend to say they do research on this, and then on this, and then they have this graph, and then this, and then this. What is this? It's a list. This, and this, and this, and this. So when I went to my first conference ever, it was in Brazil, international conference, I had really high expectation to be captivated and entertained by these, what were the world best climate scientists. Uh, in reality, my enthusiasm went lower and lower. <laughs> by the fifth day, all I could think about was to get out of the conference center. <laughs> Why is that? It's because these presenters, more often than not, don't tell a story. They just list things. And lists are not the most exciting things. And they don't hook people in. And they certainly do not connect at the deeper emotional level. But at that same conference, there was a guy that had a different approach. A guy that told a story. A guy that made me feel something while he was talking. So he reached me at the deeper emotional level. And what's the effect? Well, the effect is that I still remember his name four years after. And he basically was like a rock star at that conference. Everyone remembered his name. Everyone wanted to talk to him and to learn more about his work. So this is the power of being a good storyteller. So after that conference, I, I wanted to be more like that guy. So unfortunately, there were no workshops or training available anywhere at the university. So I had to read some books to get myself educated. And I found these great books by Dr. Randy Olson, former marine biologist turned filmmaker and science communicator. Highly recommended book. He opened my eyes to this whole world of storytelling, which was unknown to a PhD student like me. In this book, he says that he was watching a documentary on South Park. And he noticed that Trey Parker, the author of South Park, came up with a method to make his, the scripts for the episodes more interesting. Now, this is a guy that knows a few things about storytelling. He's the author of one of the most successful animated series in the world. So he, he came up with this rule of replacing. He said, well, when in a script you feel like the, it's, not, it's a bit flat, replace those end with end but therefore. End but therefore. And that helps the script become more interesting and more engaging and feel more like a story. Now, when Randy Olson, the author of the book, saw that, he had a bit of a eureka moment and realized, great, I can turn this into a storytelling template, simple enough that I can teach it to anyone. And even scientists will be able to turn their science into <laughs> stories. And it goes like this. It starts with the end part of the, temp part of the template, where you introduce your character. Uh, which could be you. You could be the hero of the story, you the scientist on your journey of discovering, doing this and that. The story hasn't started yet. The story starts now with the keyword but. But is that keyword that brings conflict and drama into what we're saying. And this is the heart of storytelling. So here someone gets shot in the movies, a grenade explodes, there's a battle. Okay, we're not making movies here, but it's the same applies to your science. There has to be some element of conflict. And we'll talk more about that in a moment. I love this quote. It says, conflict is to story what sound is to music. Let that sink in. Conflict is to story what sound is to music. So if you ever are unsure whether you're telling a story or not, you should ask yourself, is there an element of conflict in what I'm saying? That's the key question. And if the, you feel there's not enough conflict, well, add some conflict. And, I, <laughs> and I'm going to demonstrate that how to do that very soon. And then the third part of the template, that therefore is that keyword that projects us into the journey. So our hero goes on a journey of discovery, slays the dragon, fights with experiments that never work, <laughs> and eventually saves the princess. So publishes a paper <laughs> and goes back to his hometown and lives a happy life. This is it. It's apply, it's, uh, I love the end but the template because it makes it so simple. 
And it's so simple and short that you can apply to anything from a text message, a tweet, to a script, to a paper, to a report, to a talk, to a video, anything. So what are some examples of um, science stories? So the protagonist could be the subject of your research. And this was, for example, the method I used when I made my first video about my PhD work. I worked on baby fish. So the protagonist of the video was the baby fish, and he was getting lost at sea because dramatic elements were causing ocean acidification. So this is one approach, and it works because the audience developed an emotional connection with the character, and all of a sudden we start to feel something with this cute little baby fish. Another way um, is to tell your own journey of discovery. And we have a great example here at other uni, the group of Bronwyn Gillanders uh, and also with Zoe Doubleday work. They were investigating the decline of the giant Australian cuttlefish, and they couldn't figure it out. So they tried this, they tried noise pollution, they tried climate change, they tried all types of stressors. No one could explain this massive decline year after year of the giant Australian cuttlefish. So they decided to change approach. They thought, well, maybe if we look at broad scale patterns, we can see that these are declining worldwide. So they collected all these data from all around the world, put them all together, expecting to find a worldwide decline in cephalopods, so cuttlefish, squid, and octopus. What they found was the opposite. These things were on the rise globally. Now, that was a great story of discovery and where you also end up finding something that you really did not expect. It was such a good story that Zoe in that photo there is telling it to all of Australia on television. So the people love to hear your journey of discovery as a researcher and the, all the difficulties you went through because I've been there. Sure, there is difficulties, right? So those difficulties are the drama in your story and you should not hide them. You should actually make them very well visible. Another approach is to talk about the people that are most affected by your research. And if you're talking about health, well, that's easy. It's the patient. You study a disease, you make the story about the patient, and you use their point of view. But in environment, uh, I know, saw this video on um, studying the effect of um, ocean acidification on oysters. Rather than making the oyster the center of the story, they talked about a family-run oyster hatchery. And they interviewed them, they, you get to see how they lived, you get to know them. You, again, you develop that emotional connection with the characters, and all of a sudden you start to care. And then by listening to the story, you passively learn about ocean acidification and oyster hatcheries and baby oysters and all, and all that, how it works. So again, it can be your sub, um, subject, it can be you in a journey of discovery, or can be the person that are most affected. We talked a lot about drama, but let, let's give an example of how we can make something more dramatic. I'll need a volunteer. <laughs> and, um, I, okay, please. I'll need you to take this glass and put it on that table over there, please. Now you're probably thinking, what the hell is this guy asking us to do? <laughs> okay, not very interesting, right? Not, <laughs> <laughs> not much drama here. All right. This was a boring story. Yeah, let's try something different. If you look to the top, what's your name? Daniela. Daniela, mm -hmm. if you spill one drop, yeah. they all die. <laughs> Now, Daniela, I need you to take that glass and put it on the table over here. <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> Thank you. All right. So, you see? Clearly, I wasn't going to kill anyone today, but you were glued to that glass. <laughs> Well, that's the difference between a story with low stakes, where you're like, meh, or a story with high stakes, where you pay attention and it hooks you in till the end. Two minutes? Okay, I'm done. 
Um, <laughs> no more volunteering fun. Um, all right, last note. Um, I am the founder of Animation Science. We were sponsors of this conference. You can find us uh, uh, under the big tent. And what we do is that we help scientists communicate their research with visual media, either animations or illustrations, <coughs> uh, infographics, and so on. You can, um, if you're interested in our services, uh, you can check out our website or talk to me later on under the tent. Even if you're not interested, we have a blog on our website where we put out a lot of free educational content about science communication. So we teach people how to make good posters, how to make good talks, uh, you name it, a bit of everything. So even if you're not interested in the videos, please have a look at the website. Uh, I'm sure you'll find that useful. And feel free to get in touch, Twitter or email. Thank you.